It's my pleasure to introduce Maria Pia Sakamani. She will talk about structural infidelity of rational OD models in biology. So I would like to thank Professor Alexey Kinikov and all uh, his uh, research group for inviting me to, the, to give this talk. And uh, it's a great, uh, great opportunity for me to, to be here in this World uh, Renewal Institute and also to, um, to have the opportunity to come back to New York, uh, a city that, uh, which I like very much. So thank you to all of you. And my talk deals with structural identifiability of uh, biological systems, uh, which are usually nonlinear systems described by uh, ordinary differential, differential equations. And uh, first of all, I want to uh, outline the importance of the, identify, the structural identifiability problem in the biological studies, and especially with the special attention, with the special attention to biomedical modeling, which is my area of research. And um, now, uh, then, I will move to uh, its mathematical formulation, and I will show you uh, our differential algebra method that we developed to uh, check structural identifiability of uh, rational dynamic models. And um, so um, I would focus on the identifiability of models starting from given initial conditions because, especially in biomedical models, we have uh, um, systems that start from non-generic initial conditions. For example, for radioactive studies, uh, you have uh, the zero initial conditions so for uh, a model describing the metabolism of a drug, uh, you have zero initial conditions. So it is, uh, you have to check some structural properties of the dynamic models before uh, to be sure that uh, you correctly perform the parameter identifiability check. So um, then I would like to conclude my, uh, my talk by showing to you the, our recent results of, uh, uh, on the idea of checking structural identifiability in combination with the practical identifiability results, the results coming from a parameter estimation algorithm, for example, and to see how uh, the, para the numerical parameter estimation can take advantage of the results from structural identifiability. And I want to show you how um, uh, some, uh, some practical examples, some biomedical examples, and uh, I will run DAISY, the software which uh, uh, implements uh, these differential algebra methods. So, and I conclude my talk. So, the context of the problem is, so we have uh, uh, to describe complex dynamics, nonlinear interaction mechanism in cellular processes, and uh, these are modeled by the experimenter by following uh, the physical chemical laws. And so they use, they, very often, they use the ordinary differential equations involving parameters such as, such as reaction rates and volumes and uh, this kind of parameters. So uh, it, usually it, it is impossible to measure, to directly measure every portion of the system under study. So uh, the, the, the recovery of the unknown parameters can then only be approached indirectly as a parameter estimation problem starting from external input-output measurements. So uh, the first, so we have to, to, to address uh, an, identi uh, an identification problem. And the first step uh, is uh, uh, the structural identifiability. And this step is necessary to correctly proceed with the uh, parameter estimation problem from experimental data. data. Because uh, the, if we are able to check uh, 
the global, uh, the so-called global uh, identifiability of the model, so the parameters of the model have only one solution, we are able to correctly uh, perform the, estimate, the numerical estimation uh, of the parameters because they have only one solution. So the, we can say that the estimation problem is well posed. Okay, this is the mathematical formulation of our system, and so uh, it is uh, uh, a state space representation of our systems. Uh, we have uh, the x uh, are the state variables, so for example, the amount of a drug or the number of uh, the tumor cells in a specific site. Uh, U is the input function, the, usually the exogenous input function. Uh, y is the, the output function describing the measurable variables. P is the constant unknown parameter vector. And F and H are polynomial or rational functions. And for example, this can be um, this function, for example, if some, some of you are familiar with, they can describe saturation process as Michaelis Melton kinetics, which is a very common kinetics in biological modeling. I would like to note also that we can apply our uh, the differential methods also to some kind of non-polynomial systems. In, in um, for example, for exponential models, which are very common, uh, we are able to, to transform them in a polynomial form and then to, to check the identifiability of also this kind of models. So, the, I will focus on structural identifiability, which is a problem which is posed in ideal uh, conditions of noise-free data. And we have known input functions and measurables, the known uh, output functions. And uh, we, we need only measurable function. So uh, this, the, this theoretical analysis uh, can be performed before to perform the real experiment. And this is a very good point because it avoids to waste the resources in doing useless experiments. Uh, the key ingredients for the uh, structural identifiability is uh, this input-output map of the, uh, of the model. So the input-output map, whenever is the method used, you have to arrive to define this input-output map, which is a set of polynomials depending only on u and y, and they describe all the pairs u and y that satisfy your original uh, dynamical models. So um, it's in a, um, for our purposes, it's enough to, uh, to arrive at uh, an implicit form of this input-output map. Um, so the problem is, uh, given the mother structure, so we have uh, the mother structure, and given u and y, how many parameter values p satisfy this uh, input-output map? So the structure identifiability deals with the uniqueness of parameter solutions, the theoretical uniqueness of parameter solution of a dynamic system associated uh, with a given structure. Um, so the answers can be only one, and we have the global identifiability, or more than one, in a finite number of solutions, we have the local identifiability, and infinite number of solutions, we have the non-identifiability. Obviously, these answers are in the complex plane, because we have to solve some, uh, some equations with real coefficients. Uh, but this problem has nothing to do with the method that you, you use to check identifiability. So we have to be careful, because when we give to the experimenter our answer, the answer is in the complex plane. While the experimenter is often interested, is interested in knowing 
how many parameters he has in the admissible parameter space. In, in the physical case, parameter has to be uh, real, positive, uh, or something like this. So this is the answer with our theoretical uh, identifiability analysis. Now, um, I'd like to show you that identifiability analysis can be viewed in a, in a, in a dual way. So it is a, a, um, it is a tool to find the minimal, in the sense of necessary and the sufficient conditions, condition, uh, which ensures global identifiability of the model. So it is a tool for the experiment design to find which are the input, the inputs and the outputs necessary and sufficient to uh, ensure global identifiability of the model. And this is uh, crucial in biomedical uh, modeling, where there are uh, severe constraints on the experiment uh, of the experimental design uh, due for both ethical and practical reasons. Here I reported the, the definitions, the, the formal definitions. So we have the input out of the map, phi, and the system is structurally, globally, or uniquely identifiable from input output to the data if, that, if for at least a generic set of points, P star belonging to the admissible parameters um, space P, there exists at least one input function U such that the equation one has only one solution P equal to P star for all x0 in a generic subset of uh, R to N. And this is a, a slightly weaker definition with respect to the definition of uh, my paper of Automatica that we discussed uh, 10 minutes ago together. Because uh, uh, traditionally, the, the, the structure identifiability was checked from input out of the data. So uh, regardless of initial conditions um, of the state variables. Um, but now we know that we are able to include uh, the initial conditions in the structure identifiability analysis. And I will show you uh, how to do this, but uh, because they can bring uh, independent information on parameter estimation, on uh, the identifiability of the parameters. And, uh, uh, but this uh, require it, it's a different problem because now we, we, we don't start only from input out of the data, but you have uh, in input, you have uh, information of, on input state output the data. And uh, for this reason, we have to check some structural properties of the dynamical models to proceed, to correctly proceed with the structural identifiability analysis. And we will see that there can be special initial conditions for which the identifiability property does not hold. But we will discuss this point later. And so these are the definitions for locally identifiable uh, parameters. If uh, these, uh, the, 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 the equation one holds in a neighborhood of P star, and then the third case is uh, the parameter is uh, non-identifiable. It has an infinite number of solutions. So to motivate uh, the, to, to, um, to motivate and to outline the importance of the identifiability in, uh, in biological studies, I use this simple example. So this is a three-state uh, models, and uh, this is a, a very simple uh, linear uh, models. We have uh, these unknown parameters. This is a scheme that we are um, 
familiar with in biological engineering. So we deal the state as the pools, so we call them compartments. And so we have three compartments, and the input enters in the first compartment, while we measure the second compartment, the amount in the second compartment. And these arrows um, <clears throat> indicate the rate constants uh, between the compartments, and these are the unknown of our parameters. So the investigators here want to uh, perform this input output experiment to estimate these five values. Okay. So, but the first question is this and uh, this vector. How many solution? Uh, uh, how many solutions, how many values of this vector satisfy the original dynamical models? So, by applying the uh, structure identifiability test, we, add, we know that uh, there are three different parameterization, parameterizations that satisfy this, uh, uh, this dynamical model. And this means that they equivalently describe your experimental data. So this, this means they equivalently describe the experimental data, the why, the, the function why. But I, I, I reported here the trajectories, the behaviors of the uh, two internal states, uh, the, of the two compartments that are not measured. And you can see that for each of this uh, solution, parameter solution, you have different behaviors. And this is crucial in biomedical study because, for example, if the physician has to decide, um, have to, to decide uh, for example, the dose of, of drug on the basis of the level that uh, he has on the third compartment, he has uh, a big it can make a big mistake because if he has this parameter, maybe he has a inefficacy of the drug, or if he chooses this, this he has toxicity. So um, it's uh, it's very important to, to to check structural identifiability in practice because the the main goal of modeling in biomedical studies is exactly to uh, to to have an estimate of the internal behaviors of uh, the system, not obviously, and uh, not uh, of the variables that they can directly uh, measure. Okay. Another simple example is this, uh, this, this simple two compartments model uh, with given initial conditions. So you assume that you have the input and the output in the same compartment. Usually this is the usual situation because you, you have so few sites accessible to the measurements, so for example, plasma, urine, sense. And so if you uh, suppose that the X1 is the plasma compartment and the X2 are the internal uh, intracellular tissues, I don't know. And uh, we have uh, uh, four uh, parameters unknown parameters, in this case, with this structure, with this U and Y, you uh, are not able to have only one solution for K02, and you, K02 has an infinite number of solutions. So an infinite number of solutions equivalently describe the, imp the input out data of the experimenter, but uh, providing an infinite number of behaviors of the internal state. So also in this case, if this level reveal a pathological or a normal state, uh, it's a problem. Okay, so we want, unfortunately, the experimenter can proceed with a numerical estimation of the parameters, uh, even if he is not aware of the present 
of the presence of these multiple solutions or these infinite number of solutions. And uh, what we want is uh, to avoid this situation and to, uh, and to uh, check, uh, to arrive to a global um, identifiable structure of our model. So the state of the art for nonlinear models, uh, only for nonlinear because identifiability for linear models uh, is well known. So um, the, the traditional, uh, the classical uh, method is the Taylor series uh, expansion of the Y function. And uh, uh, conceptually, uh, based on the same concept, is the generating series. Uh, but this method has have a big disadvantage because they perform some derivatives and they don't know when they have to stop. So uh, they are only sufficient conditions, not the necessary conditions. And uh, uh, very important has been the introduction of differential algebra in uh, control um, in system theory. And uh, this is due to Michel Fliss. And uh, different uh, methods, uh, differential algebra methods, uh, have been proposed. And they differ, um, for example, uh, for the choice uh, of the differential ring where to work, or for the choice, uh, uh, for example, of the elimination algorithm that uh, one adopt. And so different methods have been uh, proposed. And uh, particular attention has to be posed uh, in identifiability of nonlinear models from given initial conditions, because it is not automatically. You have to adapt a little bit to the, the differential uh, uh, algebra method to these uh, uh, situations. Um, some of these uh, methods have been implemented in, in some software, and recently we have uh, uh, some papers where uh, they evaluate the, the, where the, the performances of these softwares are evaluated. And today I want to show you our uh, software, DAISY, which implements uh, our differential algebra method. And now I, I can show you the a new release of the of the software. May, may I ask what the software is? Yeah. Do I understand correctly that amount of these five, uh, all but ER can check global identifiability, right? So ER doesn't check global identifiability. Yeah, yes. I was a little bit, I, I, because in some place I found that yeah, I, I wasn't able to try before coming here. Ah, but here, in some sense, uh, Angular uh, is with uh, people, German people, I think. They, I had a discussion with them because they think to be able to to check global identifiability. Ah, but for me, I have some doubts. But uh, for um, since they ah, said. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll with that right. okay. So this is my running example, just to make clear my presentation. So it, this is only one state uh, with the Michael's mental kinetics, uh, so that it's uh, a function which describes the saturation process like this, uh, and it is characterized by these uh, uh, specific parameters, uh, which are Km, v, v, Vm, and V, which is the volume of distribution of the pool. And obviously, you can complicate uh, as you like, the, the models by adding states, which means by adding the compartments inter-exchanging inter inter among them. Okay, so this is uh, the parameters, these are the parameters that we want to uh, identify. And, um, and I, I, I want only to show in one second the results with the traditional method of the Taylor series to compare them with those I, I will uh, obtain uh, with our differential algebra method. So uh, just in, in one second, we have 
uh, we have to, um, to calculate the Taylor series expansion like this. And these uh, are in principle known, these coefficients are in principle known from the experiment. And so uh, they provide the so called exhaustive summary of the model. And uh, they are function of, they are functions of our original unknown parameters of uh, the model. So we, we begin to construct a system of uh, algebraic nonlinear equations in the unknown unknowns of our dynamical system. This is known and we have to solve in the unknown parameters of our uh, system models, uh, original models. So we have to calculate. Yeah. Last question about the first slide. So but is D known or not? No, D, yes. It no is the, the dose in this case. I so forgot we assume to say. it to be known. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Dose. So, I, I, but maybe it can be unknown, and I have to derive some more uh, function y to, to arrive to, to globally identify. So, I, I need to derive some more times. I derive, I derive, at, in this simple, simple case, now I'm able to solve these algebraic nonlinear systems of equations and to find only one solution for each parameter. So in this case, the method works because I arrive to check the global identifiability, but if not, I don't know when I can stop, so it is only a sufficient condition, and also it requires a lot of calculations. So when, when you say you don't know, is the order in which you have to differentiate? Ah, you, you don't because if you don't are able to find only one solution, you derive another time, so to have another equation. But if you are not able, you have to derive another time. But you can stop. You cannot stop by saying. This model is non-identifiable. So there's no bounds. Yeah, no bounds, exactly. So how do we check identifiability? So the question is, how do we calculate the input out of the map of the system? So we uh, are in the, in the differential algebra setting, so uh, our input out of the map will be a, a set of differential polynomials in the variables u, y, and their derivatives. And how we can eliminate the x from the original dynamic model? We can we use an elimination, an elimination algorithm coming from the differential algebra which is the RIT algorithm. And this RIT algorithm allows us to calculate the characteristic set of the ideal generated by the polynomials defining our dynamical systems. I, in the next two slides, I go into the detail. Uh, I'll ask a question about the previous slide. Um, so in, in practice, uh, when actually estimating the values of derivatives yeah. at the point, um, from the practical point of view, what's the highest order of derivative it's one can reliably estimate? I tried with the, the, the real models that I have. It's very uh, demand, uh, computationally demanding. And by hand, it's impossible just with, uh, with the computers. It's a very, very... Um, Six, eight. It depends on the. It depends especially on the number of the unknown parameters more than um, the particular structure of the model. Oh, so, so let me clarify. Um, but the problem is not the calculation of the derivatives. The problem is that they don't know. You don't know when uh, you can finish. Ah, so, so but, uh, suppose one is running an actual experiment. And what you measure, I suppose, is just y. At, yeah. uh, y, and you can measure y at different time points. Yeah. But then to, to use this, one would need to know the, the value of the derivative of y, right? 
at different points. Yeah. So one would estimate it, right? Because the, you know, for measurements you get the... No, no, no. no. Uh, this is posed in the ideal context. Uh, we, the, the Taylor series uh, is a method to check structural identifiability. So we are in the hypothesis to have an infinite number of samples, uh, uh, continuous function Y, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, you, you, you suppose that Y is differentiable, and uh, is uh, is perfect. Mm -hmm. So it, it is another. It is another story if you have uh, the real uh, samples, uh, mm -hmm. the real the, a measurement uh, of the y. So this is it is the, the answer of this is in the hypothesis to have uh, noise free data. Mm -hmm. So you you supposed to to know y and all its derivatives. Suppose, uh, but if if we has uh, well, you, uh, suppose we just uh, suppose we have uh, noise free data, but we only know why at a bunch of points. Well, it's, about, no, it's not uh, it's not uh, possible to apply this uh, like um, our method, also the differential algebra method. You cannot apply to real data because you're supposed to have all the U and Y uh, known uh, differentiable. So okay. it's not possible. Okay. okay. So, um, uh, for this reason, so, sorry, for this reason, the, uh, the structural identifiability is only a sufficient condition to ensure the uh, good uh, good results in parameter estimation. But it is not mm, it, it, it's, it's not a necessary, necessary excuse me not sufficient to ensure that you 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 successfully estimate your parameters from the real data. Mm -hmm. So from a uh, theoretical viewpoint, so what you're looking for is that y is not only differentially algebraic over um, u and the parameters, of course, yeah. um, but it's not sufficient to be just differential algebraic, but that it has to be not even algebraic because you want a unique solution. Is that correct? Yeah, I want that. I, I hope to have a unique solution. Right. Yeah. Right. In, in the, the parameters, in, the, in, the, in the parameters. So parameters are supposed to be linear. So because yes. we're solving for the for the parameters, not for y. Why we get? Why is no? You don't want to solve why, why, right. why is no? Because it's the measurable so, so P, function. P is the French algorithm. Yeah. Well, P, P, P is constant. So no, P is a constant. So it's algebraic or it's, okay. uh, it's transcendental or it is like it's linear, like it belongs to it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we eliminate the X by using this RIT algorithm, which is an elimination algorithm. And we have to check if the parameterization provided by the input output relation is injective. And here we have to. This, like in the um, Taylor series, we have to solve an algebraic nonlinear system in the unknown parameter p of the of the dynamical models, and we uh, we use uh, we apply the Berger algorithm to calculate the Grebner basis of this algebraic system, and uh, and we are uh, the Grebner basis uh, provides the number of solution of the system, and if uh, uh, they are an infinite number of solutions. We have also the analytical relations between the parameters. So we have a sort of equivalence classes, equivalent class of parameters in the sense that they equivalently describe the y function. Okay. So, so I, I just like to understand a little bit more about the theoretical um, yeah. thing behind the as the finding of the parameter p. So, so you differentiate the, um, the output. Yeah. Um, and what you, so what you get is a system of equation the parameters. Is that correct? Yeah. And the system. Algebraic. Okay. Algebraic system. Yeah. So, so the, does the parameter appear linearly or not? No. No. It could be, it could be. Uh, uh, they, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Right. So, so you're asking how many times you need to differentiate yeah. before you get an algebraic system yeah. in the parameters, yeah. which would give you a unique solution. Yeah. Okay. If possible. If possible. possible. Yeah. And, and this is actually answered in our paper. Right. The bound is given. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
in the paper that you are screened. Yeah. So I would like to mention that it was not uh, okay. Uh, so I have collected here some of the basic definitions uh, which serve to define the characteristic sets. Set. I will not. I will not go through. Uh, them in details, since maybe you, you are uh, familiar with uh, these concepts, or maybe you are not interested in. Uh, <laughs> so you can choose. So I, I only want to say that we, we need to, to define a rank uh, between the variables and the rank between the polynomials. And uh, so we are able to define an operation which is the seed division uh, between polynomials. And uh, we have to define a not or reduced set of differential polynomials. And uh, the lowest rank of the reduced set of this polynomial is called the characteristic set. The characteristic set is a, a set of differential polynomials which have uh, uh, nice properties uh, for the identifiability um, analysis. And uh, the idea is, uh, um, the, the basic idea to calculate the characteristic set is to generalize the Euclidean algorithm to, multi to multivariate polynomials using, using the, the pseudo division algorithm. So I show you how the characteristic set plays uh, place in the different uh, in the identifiability. So the idea is to consider uh, the polynomials uh, defining our uh, dynamic system as generators of a differential idea. And since we start from uh, a state space description. Uh, we know that this idea is also prime and unique. So now we have to choose. Uh, um, but the first, I want to outline that uh, I, uh, my method, uh, I choose to work in this differential ring where u, y, and x are the variables and the coefficients are, uh, the field of coefficients are rational function of p and this makes uh, this choice makes uh, the 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 method more efficient that to consider for example as other research groups the p in as a variables okay so after having defined the ranking among the variables and their derivatives, we have uh, we are we we have to apply the RIT algorithm, and we arrive to this uh, um, to this uh, uh, this set of uh, polynomials, which are uh, which are the character which form the characteristic set. So this is a particular form which is triangular in X in the variable x. And so the first is free of x, and this is our input-output map, or input-output relation. And it represents exactly the pairs u and y described by the original system. So uh, traditionally, the identifiability analysis from input output data works uh, on this only on this part of the characteristic set. I reported here the input output relation. So you have uh, so uh, you don't know. Okay. Allora, after a suitable normalization, we have the harmonic input output relation. Now, since from the experiment, the input output relation with y and u is known for F, for all the time points and these are linear coefficients the ci are linear coefficients in principle we can know uh, all these linear coefficients that i will call for example ci star but these linear coefficients are functions 
of the uh, of the um, unknown parameters, and this uh, plays the same uh, role that uh, that the coefficients of the uh, Taylor series. So this is called the exhaustive summary of the model. This map is called the exhaustive summary of the model. And we have to check global identifiability. We have to check the injectivity of this map. So if there is a one-to-one -one relation between the unknown parameter p and the known ci coefficients of the input-output relations. So this leads to construct these algebraic nonlinear systems that is the analog of that we have seen before with the Taylor series method. And we have to, uh, to solve this, uh, this uh, nonlinear system. Uh, in the application, uh, this is a highly nonlinear system, so it is not uh, trivial to solve this. But uh, in principle, we, we have to know only the number of solutions of this uh, system. And we uh, apply this with the Buchberger algebra, uh, algorithm to calculate the reduced Grebner basis of this, uh, of this system. And uh, the, the Grebner basis provides us with the number of solutions of uh, this system. So in principle, we have uh, uh, solved uh, the identifiability problem. Uh, okay, I already said this. Okay, I want to show you this, uh, uh, all this method in a very, uh, in my running example, very simple example. So the idea I said, I already said, is uh, to consider uh, the polynomials defining my dynamic model has uh, as the generators of a differential ideal in uh, the differential ring I showed you before. So um, now I have to define a standard ranking, uh, which, which is uh, um, um, stand, uh, is standard, it's not uh, difficult to define this. And in a very few, it's a very simple example. So in two, in two steps, you are able to calculate the characteristic set. And this is the characteristic set. This is free of x. And this is our input-output relation, which comes already normalized. OK. So. Now, I have to evaluate, we have, um, we have seen in the previous slide that we uh, can evaluate these linear coefficients that uh, here I call C1, C2 without stars. And the, these, linear, these linear coefficients, so these are our known terms. And we have to construct these algebraic nonlinear systems, okay, in the unknown Km, V, and Vn, okay. So we have to check, this is our, um, our, our exhaustive summary, and this is the system we have to solve to check the global identifiability. We apply the Buchberger algorithm to this system of four nonlinear equations, and we arrive to find one solution for each of these parameters in function of the known terms of our system. So we can conclude that this model is globally identifiable. So far, um, I show you the identifiability problem only from input-output data. But now we want to include also, if we have, information on initial conditions, in, on initial condition of the states of our dynamic model. So we move to a, a, a conceptually different problem. Uh, because now we have information of, um, on input, state, output of the model, and we want to use this. How 
we can do it. So we have to use now all the characteristic set because only in this portion of the characteristic set uh, the X appears. Okay, so, um, so we have to use. And uh, how can I do? We, we know, uh, maybe if, you, if, if we have uh, some information on the initial conditions, it is convenient to evaluate that polynomials at the time zero. So we can uh, use the initial condition of our system. And so uh, we evaluate these polynomials, uh, the last n polynomials at the time t, and we provide these new polynomials to add to our previous ex exhaustive summary CP, that, that we find we found uh, only by uh, considering the input output relation of the um, of the model. But to do this, we need to check. Uh, um, we have to to um, a particular property, structural property of the uh, dynamical system has to be satisfied. Otherwise, we are not able to include uh, this information on our analysis. And the, and the, and the um, property is the algebraic observability of the state. So a state component is algebraically observable if its derivative does not appear in the last n equations of the characteristic set. Only if here we have not the derivatives, we are able to use our initial conditions. Okay. In principle, this means, yeah. Can, can, yeah. can you then uh, add more variables for the derivative of the x's so that uh, you, know, you can apply this case? More, more, more x? Yeah, so if, it, if a derivative actually appears, then you change the name to a new variable. And, uh, if, so it, it, no, was, no, because it is not only a, a problem of uh, an algebraic problem. This is a structural property, which means that you are not able to construct x from the y and the, uh, u and p variables. So even if uh, I, I, I've never tried that, even if uh, you are able to, in some way, to, to substitute the derivative of x, uh, the structural property has to hold. Otherwise, uh, you cannot reconstruct uh, the right, state. Right, okay. okay. Well, when you do the substitution, you still will have to carry this relation which has a derivative. No, I understand, yes. Okay. okay. Um, so, and uh, what uh, we have to do in, uh, in uh, I called this augmented exhaustive summary just uh, to, to understand. Um, so now we have a new and augmented exhaustive summary, and so we have uh, we ca we can have uh, in practice uh, two different situations. If you know initial conditions, then these polynomials um, are polynomials only in the known P, and they bring some independent information to uh, the previous polynomial. Uh, polynomials of the exhaustive summary, and then they can, uh, obviously, they, they can help in identify your unknown parameters. The other situation can be that you don't know um, exactly your input, uh, your initial conditions, but you have some information on them. For example, you know that uh, uh, they are different from zero, or for example, you know that they are equal from uh, two initial conditions are equal. So you have some information, and in this case, uh, you can have uh, these polynomials in the unknown P and uh, initial conditions. But in both cases, uh, Okay. In both cases, you have to repeat that the, 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 the algorithm that I showed you before. So you have to apply um, to this augmented exhaustive summary the Buchberger algorithm in order to, to, to find the new Grebener basis, which provides the, uh, the identifiability results from input state output. Uh, I have, uh, Last question. 
So, uh, uh, does this approach work for all values of initial conditions, or it could be a situation in which, for some initial conditions, of some values of initial conditions that uh, that won't give the, the we will see that uh, that uh, there are special initial conditions for which this property doesn't uh, uh, hold. Uh -huh, okay. But I show you in one second. So I have a question. So could you repeat the previous slide? Oh. oh. Oops. Previous slide. Oh, it's just. A I, I, I would like to move to my software, just a moment. Previous slide. Uh -huh. Like this? Uh, the previous one? The, the, oh, no, next one. The next one. Yeah. Right there? Yes. Right there. Uh, so when you eliminate, uh, okay. so now when you do it, uh, you, you the differential and eliminate. Right? The, before this one, you limit all the x, like x and the derivatives. Yeah. Now here, here, if I understand, um, you're not eliminating x is zero, or are you limiting the all the excess x's, but not all the derivatives exist, but not the x. Which one is this here? No, I eliminate. Do you limit? Do you limit the all the derivatives? The biggest. Uh, no. I eliminate. Yeah, okay, eliminate. If it turns out that characteristic set does not contain the derivative of x, in this situation, uh, the, the discussion continues. In that case, continues. If the only yeah. continues. Right, so you see hypothesis in red. Okay, I agree. If that doesn't hold, we just don't talk about it. Okay. So that's all it means. Yes. Yeah. So, but, but there is no method to know a priori that it is uh, algebraically observable. I don't know the answer to this question, right. but one of the methods is to run this and, and right. see. Right, uh, exactly. You know, I mean, only after computation and you look at the answer, you... you yeah, no, many things are after computation. Maybe quick computation oh, or like... Right. Okay. It's relative. So there are methods to check algebraic... There are methods to check observability in the okay. differential, in this uh, dynamic systems, yes. So, I want to show you uh, an example. Uh, this is an HV model, uh, so we have uh, five states. This is a benchmark model that we used to. And uh, these are the parameter unknown parameters, and these are the uh, initial conditions. So uh, if I have some luck, just a moment. I lost, I lost the... This is slides, and the bra are you looking for ah, slides? No, because you see my arrow, but I, oh, I lost. No. You don't see the arrow. Oh, because but, but, but yeah, but, but was it? Or? But you might ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's the... two, two separate screens. Ah, okay. No, no, it's okay. So, I don't know if. Uh, ah, but you don't are able to see my software. Maybe you move it. If yes, if you yes, move your. Just plug, plug, you move it from the border of your screen. If, if, you grab, uh, if you grab your. Software and, and, and move it to the screen. Oh, yes. Why do you duplicate the screen? Hey, it's, 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 it's just up, 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 I open the reduce. Uh, reduce. And so I would like to move behavior, and you can yes. then maybe, maybe you just one. have maybe you just have separate. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 how can you can you see this? Uh huh. No problem. Yes. I would like to show. Yeah, oh, duplicate the screen. I have to write. Oh, okay. You have to write. Okay. Let's let's try. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, just click. If it is not possible, it. it's no, no, it's not it's it should, it should, it should be easy. You just click, click, right, right button. Right button. And then the uh, display settings, yes. Uh, mirror displaces this. Uh, maybe you can identify. I know, identify. Maybe just scroll down. Scroll down. But scroll. I can oh, show oh, at the end of, the, of my talk. It's no problem. Duplicate. Uh, yeah, you're good. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, now see it. Okay. And then my slides, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, I have to load the daisy. And I... Um, 25, maybe. So this is the, the HIV uh, model that I showed you before. And it takes some seconds to do the analysis, I hope. Uh, okay, this is the characteristic set. 
So this is so far is the characteristic wow. set. <laughs> <laughs> so the first two are the input output equations. Ah, okay, it's finished. So the, um, you, you find that the results uh, without initial conditions and the model is non-identifiable. So you can see that the Q, for example, has an infinite number of solutions. But it is very useful for a biomedical researcher because uh, he can uh, suppose that uh, we finish and the model is non-identifiable. This is very useful because uh, he, can, he can realize that the Q is impossible to, to estimate numerically with good precision. So he has uh, to, 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 to modify or the model structure to enrich uh, the input-output configuration. And this can be done before to perform the real experiment. And then with the uh, real solution, the model, with the initial conditions, the model becomes uh, um, globally identifiable. So to, to avoid it, to, to move uh, uh, every time, I want to show you the next uh, model, which is the chemical one, and this uh, takes uh, a little bit more, about 15 seconds, uh, to, to give the, um, the results. So, uh, but uh, we have, uh, I want only to show that the, this check uh, provides also you with the algebraic observability, if somebody is interested in this. Okay, we uh, now is finished. So the parameter uh, is globally identifiable. This written is only because I, I is the second time that I am uh, inside the program, and so this. So we go back to okay this presentation. So this is the HIV model, and this was the chemical, the second one that I showed you. So. Now the problem, how, how much time I have? Um, 10 minutes. Is 10 minutes. Okay. So I, maybe I skip the problem with the initial condition because I want to, to show the results at the end. Uh, it's, up, it's up to you. It's up to you. 10 minutes. You. OK. So the problem is that the input state output identifiability method may not work when system is started at spe specific special initial conditions. And this has nothing to do with the particular method to use. Um, and um, we have to check some important properties, the algebraic observability that we have already uh, seen and the accessibility because uh, we want to arrive to a, a, a model in its minimal form, possibly. And um, uh, very often the investigator are not uh, used to to define. Uh, um, there, there are a lot of redund There is a lot of redundancy when the investigator formulate a model. So the accessibility is important. The system uh, system is accessible from the initial condition. If for suitable input U, U and the state X can reach an open set of full dimension of the state space. So we have to check if we have specific initial conditions, not generic, for example, from zero, we have to check if the system is accessible from that initial conditions. And, and uh, luckily, we have uh, an accessibility rank conditions, which works for analytical uh, models. And so if I write in this way with the, the, this, this model is affine in the control, which is uh, the usual situation in the applications, uh, and necessary, we have a necessary a sufficient condition, which, uh, which can be uh, checked by Lee bracket in the F and G of the models. So uh, we have to calculate this. Uh, so, this yeah. so this is an additional test you like to do, is that right? Yeah, in if addition. you have specific initial conditions. So if you if your model doesn't start from generic initial conditions. Okay, for, for example, from so, so zero. So you already assume identifiability. Yeah. And then now you're asking the next property of the system. No, yeah, I have to check first the accessibility uh -huh. from your initial conditions. Uh -huh. And the results is that we have shown that I, I go fast, maybe in this, if, if some people is interesting, I can 
uh, go into the details. But uh, we have shown that if the system is accessible from everywhere, from every initial state, the, the check of identifiability correctly works. Oh, but, I see. but if the system is accessible except from a thin set of measure zero of initial con and these in your initial conditions belongs to this thin set, then <coughs> the, the, the check that I showed you before it doesn't work correctly because we have shown that the correct answer of the identifiability problem is given by uh, the identifiability test applied to the original model plus the equation describing this invariant set where the solution is uh, constrained. The, the evolution of the system is constrained. And for, I, I, the, here there is a simple example. Uh, this is a model which is accessible except for x0 belonging to this uh, invariant uh, defined by this equation. So this is uh, p3 x2 minus p1 equal 0. So if uh, the, your initial condition doesn't belong to this uh, uh, invariant set, it's okay and the model is globally identifiability, identifiable. But if x0 belongs to this thin set, the, the, you have not the correct answer of uh, identifiability, the identifiability test, but you have to add these equations to the equations of your original systems to have the correct answer. So, so yeah. let me understand your algorithm. So. Would it be correct to say, I, I'm interested in identifiability, and the first thing you do is you check accessibility. Only if you have non-generic initial conditions. Right, 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 okay. Right, right. If, okay. If it's not, you somehow have an equation to add the system yeah. and try again. Yeah. Yeah. And then you say, is it accessible? And if it is now, then you can you, then yeah. you can run it out and get yeah. an answer. I see. So it's, you you test the conditional. Sort of the degenerate mm -hmm. and this yeah. to, to make sure that you can get an answer. Right? How, how do you know whether the input is generic or not? Your input? I mean, in right. the initial state, I mean. For example, in practice, um, in, pract in theory, you, ha you should uh, test every time the accessibility from your initial conditions. But in practice, uh, for example, we have a lot of uh, zero initial conditions, so we are obliged to test. Uh, or if you have, uh, for example, uh, two uh, initial conditions, equal initial conditions, so you have to test. So does that mean that um, generic means that it is accessible? Or is, it, or is accessibility a, um, nest, a sufficient condition yes. for no. sufficient? Yes, sufficient, sufficient. for uh, yeah. And by definition, what if you are generic. not accessible, you are not generic, I guess. Yeah. Okay. If you want to discuss right. later, I can uh, show well, you the... Because first. otherwise I'm oh, not okay. able to show you right. the, the software, right. yeah. if you want. Yeah. I don't know. Just so, a quick question. Yeah. These theorems, they are in, in, in the paper you showed yeah. us, right? Is it? Not this one. It's in a thesis. Mm -hmm. I can give you ah, okay. the thesis. Yeah, and the last case is the system is non-accessible from all initial states. So, for example, the, 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 the situation is that the system evolves in a lower dimension manifold. Okay. And in this case, we have shown that the, the, um, the basic uh, we say method works correctly. So the, I, have, uh, I can show you this uh, example. Uh, just only, this is a, a real world example uh, describing uh, the EPO receptor. Uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, there is a, a, a lot of redundance uh, in the description of the, of the model, so we can simplify the mathematical description. And here, I can show you... The results. 
of this model. Ah. So the, this model is globally identifiable and the initial conditions are not necessary to be included in the analysis because you, found, you find the, uh, one solution for each uh, unknown parameters. Okay. So the fact that we are able to deal, to check identifiability of also uh, systems which are non, uh, which are globally non, non accessible from initial conditions, allows us to deal also with some non polynomials models. For example, here the exponential is the more popular models that we have in biological systems. So uh, it's easy to introduce a new state variables and to make in a polynomial form your original system, which obviously now is not of, is a, is a trick. So it is not of three dimensional. Uh, and so um, it is globally non-accessible, obviously. And also we are able to, to deal with this kind of models, which in practice uh, are very common, so with the time varying models, for example, and in this case also, we can add an additional state variables and we are able to check this um, identifiability. So these are some pros that we already know, I think, and some cons of the structural identifiability. The first uh, cons is that it's uh, analytical is an analytical analysis, so uh, imposes uh, bigger restrictions on the size and the complexity of the systems. Uh, and obviously, uh, it is not sufficient to guarantee an accurate identification of the model from the real input out of the data. So I want to show you the, our recent uh, research. The idea was to combine the structural with the practical identifiability to take advantage of uh, the, the both the results, and in particular in local identifiability case, by combining these two uh, these two different methods, we are able to calculate all the multiple numerical solution of the parameters. In case of non identifiable models, we can use the analytical relations between the non-identifiable parameters as constraints in the parameter estimation. So parameter estimation, I skip now this, is based on a definition of a cost functions of a cost function and you have to find the minimum, the minimum, the global minimum. So there are a lot of uh, very, very, very strong uh, algorithms, multi-star, uh, multi-search algorithm that are able uh, to, to avoid the, min, the, the local minima, but uh, they cannot guarantee to find all global minima. So we wanted to, to, to combine the, the two approaches when possible for the structural analysis to, to, to use first structural identifiability to calculate the exact number of the global minima. And then with the numerical parameter estimation to find one of this solution, and then to go back to the structural analysis, to the Grebener basis, to have all the equivalent solutions of that that the experiment gives to me. So I go back to, uh, to the simple locally identifiable model that I showed you before. And if the experimenter gives me this parameter estimation value, this parameter estimate, I am able to calculate the equivalent, uh, the, the second and the third parameter solution, which equivalently describe the input-output uh, data. So it's important to, to be aware of all the parameter solutions for, uh, for to give a reliable results. And I, I like to show you that if the experimenter gives me that numerical value for one of parameter solution, it can happen that the other two are not in the admissible um, parameter space. So a posteriori, I can reject these two solutions and the model becomes globally identifiable uh, a posteriori, we can say. 
And this is a nice uh, uh, example of uh, um, a, a pharmacokinetic model, so the chemotherapeutic agent. These are four compartments uh, represented the drug molecules that distribute to and from the plasma compartment into fast and exchange tissues before to be cleaned from the blood. So I show you that this model has three different solutions. And so you can see that the model, this different solution predict three different behaviors from, for each internal state. And so this, uh, this is very important to, to know every uh, solution. And um, I can show you uh, in one second how to. 42. Okay. So you see that the Grebener basis provides you with the three. The first is the true one. The, the first is the, 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 the numerical one. And, and the, the other, you can see this. Uh, Parenthesis. So we have the three different solutions. Okay, for this model. And then I will move to my last uh, example. So it is a, a classical HIV HIV model, um, uh, which takes uh, into consideration the uninfected. T cell, the latently infected cells, the actively infected cells, and the free infectious virus particles. It is a very the classical one, um, HV uh, model. And we have uh, two different, two, two output uh, measure, um, functions, and these are the unknown parameters. Sorry, I have to do here. Okay. So here, um, we have uh, shown that we have uh, two different solutions for the parameters. And we, it is interesting to see this, uh, this scheme. So here are the two compartments that are measured. So we have only one behavior predicted by both of the parameter solution. Here, we have uh, uh, the the di two different behaviors from the latently and infected cells, and uh, it is uh, interesting to see that uh, the, the the system evolves in years, and only after two years, the two parameterization exhibits exhibit two different behaviors. And incidentally, it's interesting to to, to know that the authors state in the um, paper that they found a, a unrealistic uh, uh, increasing on the latently uh, T cell. And this may induce uh, to think that it is the second solution, the more realistic one. And so I think that it is important to know both the solutions to arrive to, uh, to, to complete the results of the authors, because they were uh, they surprised to, 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 to see a, a so big increase after two years. And maybe is the other solution the more realistic one. So it's important to provide to the experimenter all the pictures, all the possible solutions of the parameters, and to provide the numerical values of these uh, solutions to, 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 have to complete the results and to can uh, discuss them. So I would like to conclude my talk by showing the website of our software. DAISY, which is implemented in symbolic language, coded in the symbolic language reduce, which is now, which is not now the best choice. Um, it is, uh, it is easy. We, we have to to provide an easy tool because the user should be uh, biological investigators, and so without any mathematical. Um, prerequisite uh, to use uh, the, the software. This is a beta version, so I would be grateful of getting feedback uh, about bugs and suggestions. 
And um, now this is in this uh, temporary uh, website, but uh, at the end of the uh, of our test, uh, we uh, we I will move this on the official website of my department, so uh, we can see. Please wait. Okay, this is uh, the uh, Daisy. Uh, differential algebra for identifiability of system is uh, the official reason of the name, but my daughter is Margarita, so the name is Daisy. Uh, and uh, uh, okay, so we are uh, we have. Uh, I, I should say. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, I don't know. Ah, so you you, you have that website mm -hmm. there? Sorry. Uh, Maybe I have to do like this. Uh, oh. Duplicate. No, let's see. Duplicate yeah, for me. Yeah. Okay. So um, you have uh, an instruction uh, for uh, Windows user and for Mac uh, users. So instruction to. Uh, for installing Reduce and for installing Daisy. Daisy is um, is just to move uh, uh, from one directory that you download to your directory one file, so it's very easy. And uh, the, in Reduce, there are two versions where uh, one has a graphical interface, so the C, this, uh, this, this version is um, easier because it has a graphical interface, so I think it's better to use this, this version. And so uh, these are the instructions how to install. How to use, here you have the instruction to write the input file that I maybe I've shown you before. It's very easy. You have to write, to list the input output variables, to list the unknown parameters, to write the equations, and to, to say which are the, if you want, to, uh, which are the initial conditions. So here are all the instructions with um, each case is uh, or some example like this, and how to run Daisy. So as you can see, it's uh, you have to load the program and you you have to enter the name of your input file and uh, you can solve. Uh, here you have some documentation, some references, and some examples that you can download. And here you can, now the example you can open without the download the, the, the software. But the download you have to register and uh, you, and um, if uh, you have to choose, but only for me to, to, to I, I would like to know if uh, the user are more mathematical, with mathematical or biological background. And so you can download the, your, the, the software. What's your current data uh, user base? How big is your current user base? Yes. User base. How many people have registered? So, so far, 650, 670. This is over a period? But over a big period. I, 2012, I, right? 2006? Oh, no. I, I, I made some statistics in the, the last 15 years, maybe. Right, right. Okay. But I think that's... Um, mm -hmm. Many of these are not more interested in. Right. So are they um, mostly biology or? Math? No, no, no. Mostly, maybe biologists. But I don't know if uh, um, I have uh, um, I received all the requests mm -hmm. requests of help uh, right. and uh, uh, only biologists in the research area area. Mm -hmm. And also, and also physician um, in the medical schools, uh, mm -hmm. because in my uh, background was uh, more in the um, in the metabolism, uh, modeling, insulin glucose, and so I presented this uh, this software to diabetics. Companies. So, 
Um, so right now you have identifiability and you have parameter estimation? Yeah, and uh, this is a good uh, question because uh, uh, the DAISY solved the parameter identifiability. Right. But if you, uh, next step would be, since uh, we have all the information, we can, uh, we can um, provide also um, answer on the identifiability of initial conditions. Right. Because I, I can see my visual inspection, right, I can right, say, right. but but the DAISY doesn't... So that uh, seems like very easy to add yeah, to the functionality. Yeah, yeah. But I guess if you can have parameter estimation, your database will double. Uh, parameter estimation? Yeah, people want numbers, right? You have to know what are the parameters. You have to add, know what... Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, so but that's very important. Yeah, so but for example, for example, in the last uh, example, uh, in the HIV example, uh, we have uh, uh, some. Um, we uh, we have. Uh, I don't remember if maybe in the in the model uh, in the previous model, we were able to find the the experimental data in the supplementary material of the paper, and that we. So we have the numerical uh, parameter estimation, and we are able to find the other solutions of the parameters. But we not automatically, no. by hand, or automatically in Daisy. Ah, no. you don't Daisy know. in Daisy no, experimental not, not data, data, no. Right. Uh, yeah, I work. Um, it's it's a separate. I I, I use an optimization algorithm. Oh, okay. I find the the parameter estimate and I go back to to Daisy. Mm. I see. I have a suggestion. A beautiful picture of Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you Photoshop a butterfly on one of the daisies? Okay. Photoshop. Good, good suggestion. In this picture, Photoshop. Yeah. One. Yeah. Or B. Okay. B or butterfly. Or both. Other questions? Is it GIF even moving? <laughs> moving. <laughs> I ask a question too. But is it possible to download the source code from the, the site? No. No, okay. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, when you have the given the parameter, um, the parameter estimation p star, I believe you on one of the slides you said you compute the Grunder basis. Now, how do you compute Grunder basis using real data? Uh, you you treat the real numbers, I mean, or the approximate numbers as an integer kind of thing, or what? Uh, if I well and uh... it's not real data. No, it's, it's not for real data. Ideal. I know, but but uh, you're asking you're given the para you the real number, right? Ah, oh, no, no. This is an, a point that I missed. This point, sorry. Uh, you are right. Uh, the C star that I show you uh, should be symbolic, uh, symbolic numbers. Right. But uh, just when I move uh, to um, to more complex uh, models. Uh, the calculation, the symbolic calculations are uh, uh, are not uh, working. So I have to move to numerical uh, calculation, and I have to choose the C star in the range of the map of the exhaustive summary to can uh, have the number which are compatible with the system. And uh, otherwise, it it would take uh, hours in symbolic. I mean, there are some uh, symbolic numerical algorithms uh, by people from the Karpovans world um, that would take the equations with numerical, I mean, numerical, not integer, I mean, not rational, coefficients, and kind of try to find the best fit for those equations. Yeah. Have you tried that, or is that new? Yeah, I work. I always work on parameter estimation in uh, um, because we have a lot of uh, real data, and uh, I use um, I don't know the, the the simplest I don't know the the nonlinear squares for example to to find the best fit, and I produce the p star, and if the model has more uh, solution, I can use this. 
the numerical value of p star in my Grebener basis to give to 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 know the equivalent uh, all the class of equivalence of the parameters. Yes. Uh, another question is, um, now it may not make sense, but is it possible that, let's say, the given dynamical system that you have, that you're trying to solve in, in your form, um, with the input output and all that, um, we actually a characteristic set itself? We actually? Be actually a characteristic set. Suppose I give you a characteristic set, mm -hmm. right? Now, um, can you define global identifiability for that characteristic set? Yeah. Or is it the same as the one that you start computing? You know what I mean? So, so you're given a dynamical system. Okay. Somehow you do some calculation okay. and you calculate yeah. a characteristic set. Uh -huh. A characteristic set is sufficient have... to, to check the global identifiability of the model. Yeah, I understand. Uh -huh. Is there a definition for global identifiability for the Characteristic set itself as a dynamical system. You see, uh, in the characteristic set, there are inequalities as well, which you didn't mention, right? Because it's a colon ideal. Yeah. So, how does the inequality there, I mean, in equation rather, uh, affect, let's say, global identifiability? In other words, when you take a system and you do some computation, you transform it. Yeah. Now, how is the, uh, the concept of global identifiability? Identifiability um, is it invariant under all these transformations? I, I think it's somewhat I, out of the uh, yeah. conditional. Well, uh, no. so, uh, uh, so a part of definition of the definition is some generosity assumptions. That's right. But right. you know, you throw away, uh, throw away, you can throw away some, some, some risky some, 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 that that uh, takes uh, so to speak takes care of the inequalities that you have. Right. So if you, rem if you remember when she defined a global identifiability, she mentioned the generosity condition at the beginning. Right, but but you see that, that generic silly condition is a uh, pretty vague. Is that correct? But I mean, the, but then I mean we were in, in, in say, I mean you, you keep you could modify it, you know, by throwing away some. Uh, but then the inequation. You yeah. generate the basically uh, but you see the no, but the original dynamic system have no inequations. No. Yeah. But the definition of the but also identifiability uh, she used the generic generic for all so, so for all parameter in a certain uh, measure, measure zero. Yeah, except measure zero. Ah. Except measure zero. So I think she mentioned it at the beginning. So you don't but, specify but, but, still, it's, 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 but, but still there is this well, there's an existential quantifier in front of that uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but whatever it is, is a definition, right? For the original system. And there is a, should be a definition for the character set as well. Should be. As a dynamical system. Now, my question is, are this invariant? This, in other words, can so I if, have... Uh, okay, if you re reapply to the, to the characteristic set, will you get the same thing? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, the same result that it is yeah. global identifiable. I mean, could I have the character accepting is either as a dynamic system is globally identifiable, but the other one is not, or I mean, is this a sufficient, necessary sufficient condition is the other way to, to put it. Mm, okay, I understand the question. Right. That, that's not the, yeah, I mean, that, it, that's it, not it, it could be a sufficient condition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, the, but I don't know. Because because the, the system has changed. You know, it's a, it's a property of an ideal, in fact. No, but yeah. And you're beating different well, generators. Well, yeah. In that case, yeah. you this should define it in that form. Uh, well, I mean, so whoever is defining global identifiability will sure. define it in a in a the kind of invariant way. Uh, so you see, it, it depends. It, it depends on the ideal. It, it depends on the audience. Itself. It depends on That's the audience uh, that audience. Will, who will read the definition, William. From the technical perspective, there might be some benefits on defining it in some invariant way, but the primary users, as we we'll discussed, were from uh, by no, but, area. No, but if you, define, if you are able to define it in a differential ideal theoretical way, then you can apply it, you know, and show that it is invariant under whatever computation you're doing. So th then, it a, would be, then it would be okay. So that's a great point from the specialized academic perspective. Okay. 
There are also other perspectives that oh, will oh, 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 yeah. But the characteristic but, set but the whole, has the, the same order, to for example, the of the dynamic right. numbers. That's what, uh, that's what Michelle please did. And they right. have the same solutions. I've never think about that. There are different approaches, so... It's not in, in the way to, I, I, It's not a different approach. In the, in the way to present them. It should be a... I mean, I'm not asking you to actually do that research yet, but I'm asking, is that a valid way yeah, of to look at it? Of course it is a valid Oh, yes. Of course it's a valid question. Oh, yeah. It's mathematical. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Yes, so the answer is yes. 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 <laughs> so it's a suggestion. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm. I have to think about um, this uh, issue. I mean, it's always better to have an ideal, differential ideal definition of a concept instead of a practical maybe in addition in addition in addition no that could be applied to the thing uh, otherwise you you are you are just believing things in a way no i think i enough discussion about this okay. issue in the literature actually okay there yeah, are people who, who were more from that view uh, more questions? Okay. Uh, let's okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.